Hey guys, Steven Pinto, BSN athlete. Super excited to have Dr. Kip on here. How you doing, Dr. Kip? Good, Steven, how you doing, man? Good, good. So today I wanted to talk about common misconceptions with uh, foam rolling. And so what I often see is people do it for 45 minutes, an hour, 10 minutes. They do it to break down adhesions or scar tissue. So can you kind of walk us through that as far as duration, those misconceptions, and how to actually do it correctly? Absolutely. So foam rolling can be a very powerful tool to help improve your movement patterns. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions that you were talking about is it's breaking up adhesions or it's breaking up scar tissue. And through the research that we've found, it's, it's, that's pretty false. Okay. Um, one of the biggest things that it's doing is working at a neurophysiological level. So to kind of dumb that down a little bit, it's basically kind of working on your neural tension in the brain. Okay. okay? So if you have tension in certain areas, you can foam roll or use myofascial release to improve your movement patterns. So it's pretty quick and the duration doesn't need to be 45 minutes up to an hour. Okay, and is that the only way to break that down is by foam rolling or is there other techniques or tools I could There's also There's many use? different tools. I mean, we've got the foam roller here. We've got a medicine ball right there. People use lacrosse balls, they use PVC pipes, okay. they use soft balls, and I mean, even the, the massage therapy profession is kind of based around this myofascial release. Okay, and which one do you recommend, Does, or it depends? It's whatever works best for you. So you need to kind of experiment with it, but um, you should just kind of see if it improves your movement quality and it feels better afterwards. Okay, so can we start with the lower extremities with the foam roll? Yeah, let's and do You it. can walk me through that. So yep. how would you recommend starting? So let's just start with the hamstrings. Okay. Okay, so you're just gonna position the foam roller on the hamstring there. Now you're just gonna roll yourself back and forth all the way from the knee all the way up to the hip. Okay, so this is what I usually see like in the gym. Like, yeah. does, is this beneficial or? You know, the biggest thing is you wanna control the movement. Okay. So you wanna relax into it, okay? You don't need to be going very fast back and forth. You wanna let gravity push it down and try to find and kind of search for those tension and those, those tight areas in the hamstring. Okay, yeah. And just working back and forth. You can even cross your other leg over, provide a little bit more of a pressure and work in the tissue all the way through there. So that looks great. Yeah. Okay, now from there, you can flip around to the other side and work your quad. So same thing, you'd be kind of on your stomach area. Like so? Just like that. And am I on my forearms, hands? Either or, yep, okay. forearms work well. And just relaxing into it, back and forth. Stay, same, slow, steady motion, right? Slow, steady motion is always better. So just like that. Now, the inner thigh is kind of a hard to reach area, and okay. it's often a, an area that is very tense on people, okay? Oh yeah. A lot of us sit throughout the day, so that's a very common area that we see in that tension, tension spot. So what I like to utilize is a medicine ball to kind of get at that area. All right. Okay, so from here, you're gonna open your leg up, okay, to the side, and then roll all the way from the knee up to the proximal part of your hip. Okay. Like this? Just like that. Okay. Good. And same thing like you utilize with the foam roller. You want to go nice and slow. Oh yeah, I feel that. That's perfect. Okay. So, I also think that people always ask the question, you know, when do I foam roll? You know, should I do it before? Should I do it after I work out? So foam rolling and myofascial release should improve your movement patterns. So if you want to do it before you squat or before you deadlift or do something, go into some of these routines and focus on some of those areas to improve your movement. Okay, so can I do it before and after? You can do it before and after. These tools are gonna to help me improve range of motion and quality of movement. I can now use a medicine ball, which I've never done before, which I'm gonna start incorporating and using the foam roll before and after my workout on the tight areas. And also, it doesn't have to be 45 minutes, thank God. Yep, yep. Every routine should be individualized to what you need. So okay. just because you saw someone in the gym doing a certain routine doesn't mean that routine will work for you. Okay. All right, well, thanks, Dr. Kep. Appreciate you, you coming on. Uh, guys, if you have any other um, observations or comments, questions, feedback for me, uh, please leave some down below. Subscribe and like. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.